Hey everybody, just uh, trucking along here again. Uh, today we are going to be soldering the other end of the wire, uh, the wire setup that we've got uh, to the Teensy, which is our USB controller for this mod. Uh, that's annoying me. Bye. And uh, so coming off of the last video where we soldered to the bottom of the stick and did uh, tinning, and then we soldered to the bottom of the stick. I went back off camera and cleaned up all the contacts and cleaned up my soldering job that I butchered um, while standing up without having my hands supported being far away through the camera. So I redid that, you know, kind of right on top of it. And you can see the stick seats all the way down in. You can see see everything coming out of the bottom like you would expect. Um, so now we're going to solder to the TNC. And uh, yeah, this is a this is a piece of cake. I think this video should be shorter. Watch me be a liar at the end of this. Okay. So just a quick talk about what needs to happen. So on the, if you've done the color coding, which you should, you've got two wires, um, gold and black. Gold and my for, for me, that's the signal for the for the button. It can really be whatever you want, just as long as it's not black or blue or red. You could use green or whatever, whatever uh, color you've got laying around. Or you could just leave it bare, you know, whatever, since it's the only one. So I've got these two for the, come on camera, for the button. Then I've got a group of three, uh, I've got two groups of threes, black, blue, red, black, blue, red. All of the black wires, of which there are three, are ground, so we can unify them. There are two red wires, which are power, we can unify those. And then the remaining two blue wires are the analog signal for the potentiometers. Those cannot be unified, they need to go to each of their own, uh, they each need to go to their own analog pin on the TNC. Um, the gold wire for the button needs to go to its own digital pin. So all the black ground wires can be unified they'll go to one ground pin. The two red wires can be unified. They'll go to one of the power pins. And then the remaining three, the gold wire, and then the two blues will each go to their own pins. And we'll look at the, the, the sheet, the diagram here to talk about that. So on this sheet, let me get a pointer. I should have had one already. This is annoying. So anyways, on this sheet, we got a bunch of stuff. These are just general project USB controllers. Um, well, I guess it, the camera decided it wanted to color correct for the for the clouds and the sun outside. Okay. Um, uh, VIN voltage, which is I believe directly off of the USB cable, and then 3.3 voltage, which is regulated um, through the chip. So this five volts right here is whatever is coming off of the USB line, like directly. And then three volts is after that power has gone through the, um, the power circuitry on the chip, so it's regulated. I tend to use 3.3, so you get a more consistent uh, power fed to the stick. The stick doesn't care whether it's five or 3.3. Th uh, and then you've got a ground pin, a ground pin. I tend to use, feed everything down to this one. There's also one over here, and there's also one on the bottom somewhere, or maybe not. Anyways, ah, uh, um, I tend to use this pin, digital pin zero. So all the digital pins are gray. I tend to use this digital pin zero for the uh, for the button signal, and then I use uh, analog pins or this tan peach. I use A9 and A8, so these two pins next to the three volt for the two blue ones, and it really doesn't matter. You'll see when we get to the code portion, to the to the uh, the, the the firmware flashing portion, how you have to uh, tweak and adjust that to match whatever it is that you did. Um, anyways, so let's let's just get to going here. We're gonna put that down to the side. I don't need this marker, so you can just go here. Um, I've got solder and the tip cleaner off camera and I've got the soldering iron set to 280C. Uh, again, like I said in the last video, I believe the TNC wants 300 degrees max, so I just drop it down a little bit so I'm comfortable with it. Um, don't think I need that. 
So we have the teensy here, and uh, so ground we'll do first. Uh, I like to hold it to the side, so let me get a grip on it. Be careful when you're doing this because there are some surface mount components that you do not want to knock loose. They should be secure because they're soldered in place, but still, just be careful because if you break an SMB component, you're out of luck. Ain't no one going to fix it for you unless you've got a hot air rework station or, uh, or can do SMD soldering. Good flipping luck fixing that. So I need to get it to the side a little bit, kind of tilted like this, because I need to be able to feed wires to the bottom and then solder to the top. So we need all the, oops, I said that backwards, because I want to feed wires from the top but solder from the bottom is how I want to do it. Uh, I might use the other side of the helping hands because that side is flippy floppy. Okay, so that's in place. We want to get all the black ones together. Those two are black. These are all the ground wires. So we've got a bundle of three. You want to make sure that they are all roughly the same length. I'm doing that off camera. I shouldn't be. I'm just kind of trying to straighten out some of these. I may have to trim them a little bit, but that's roughly the same length. So now you want to try to kind of feed them up to the bottom. Let's see if I can do this looking through the camera preview. I might be making a fool of myself here. You also need to kind of get them because these holes are small join together a little bit. If you need to twist it a little bit, then do that, but good luck with that. Also, you might need to feed them in one at a time, which I might have to do here. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to do that. So... I just really can't see what I'm doing here. Yeah, excuse me, I'm going to have to get closer. Did I move the camera? I did not. I might need to twist these a little bit so they are kind of closer together. That's a little bit better. I think I got it right there. Kind of give them a shove because you want to make sure that all of them get in. I think all of them are in. I can inspect it from the other side when I'm done, but you're looking f to see three come through, and I think I see all three. You just have to get really close to it. So, soldering time. Try really hard not to push, push the wires down. You just want to kind of touch the pad and then get a little bit of heat on the wires themselves. And then once you can melt the solder, the solder itself will flow and kind of provide some heat itself. Some heat transfer. There we go. And just wait for it to flow. There we go. That's pretty good. Try not to blow on it. The, the temptation will be to blow on this. But you want to let that cool naturally. Um, that, in, that helps to ensure that the solder joint is proper otherwise you can have some separation I think that's good I'm gonna take it off and we can inspect it together so you can see it's kinda of like a little teepee and it's shiny that's all good and then from the other side you should have three wires going to this hole I believe I did it I may have to check this off camera to make sure but I think that looks good now at this point be super duper careful and ginger with this because this is a delicate joint here. Um, just be aware that if you put this down and you like grab it by the teensy and move it over or whatever, you might rip it. So just be careful. So the next thing we want, or the next thing that I'm going to do, you can do this in whatever order really, is I'm going to get this gold wire into that pin zebra right there since that's our digital pin. 
that I'm going to use that's in the code. So let me get this back on the helping hands. Actually, I might try to just feed the wire through and then flip it over and we'll see if it stays. The more wires that you get in place, the more, the more secure and the easier this gets. The first, the first two can be a little tricky since uh, you know the whole thing just kind of wants to move on you. But I think I got that in. Let's see what, we'll see what we can do here. Move this a bit. Let me just, I'm gonna get closer down and look. Okay, that's staying, so I think I can just hit that. Again, you wanna get the pad hot and then try to get the wire hot a little bit without pushing it down and then flow solder and let the solder flow and heat things up evenly. So hold it there for a moment and then see if you can melt some solder on there to get it to flow. That's going and you'll see it kind of flow down. Boom. Perfect. Again, just general soldering tips. You want, when you're soldering a pad like this on a PCB, you want the end result to be kind of like a teepee and you want it to be shiny. If it's not shiny, if it's dull, that means your solder is bad or you've got a bad, or you've got a, like what we call a cold solder joint. That looks good, TP shiny. Um, or if it's not a TP, that means the solder didn't flow completely or where it should have. Like if it's just like a blob, you need to, you need to put more heat on it or uh, take the solder off with a sucker or with some mesh wire and then redo it. Trust me, getting this right and taking the time to do this right will save you because when you get this installed on your device, if your joints aren't good, it may fail and then the, your whole mod is just, you, you got to take it apart and fix it. So just get this right. It's worth trying. Soldering is fun, guys. You can do it. Um, and I am by no means an expert. I have failed many times. And, uh, but it's fun. It's fun. Anyway, so now we're going to unify power, which is, which is red. And remember, we were going to go to this 3.3 volts right here. So this third pin on the other side. So try to get those wires together. Push the blue ones to the side and just feed them through. This is so weird doing it through the camera preview. There we go. Bloop. Got it. So now some more sleight of hand. Keeping pressure on that. So they don't move or move a whole bunch. Try to get it down and clipped into the helping hands and just let go of things slowly and see if it will hold. See if they'll stay. I think they did. I'm just inspecting. Yeah, I need to push that one up a little bit. Push it up. Push it up. There we go. That'll stay. Now I can I can hit that. Here we go, three volts. Oh, it moved. I may have to bend these wires a little bit. So if it moves on you like that and you try a few times and you can't get it, try from a different side. No, okay. So what I'm gonna have to do, that, that moved again, is I'm gonna have to kinda, I'm gonna push this up and move this underneath so there's some tension or there's some pressure from beneath. I think I got it there. All right, I'm trying to do this without my head being in the picture. Got it on there, I think this is gonna be good. Float the solder, flow it, flow for me. There it goes, boom. I might've done a little bit too much. If you think you do too much, that's okay. Just hold the heat on it for a little bit longer so it flows all the way through and you'll get a good result, I think. So just let it cool for a second. It doesn't take long. Don't blow on it. Try not to. I know the temptation. Focus, please. I take that out. How do I get this thing to focus? There we go. It's pretty good. Both wires are there. TP shiny, boom. All right, now all we've got left are these two blue wires, the signal for the potentiometers. So we want analog pin nine and eight. So what's right there next to 3.3 volts. 
no problem. Just gonna go ahead and feed them through and hope we get lucky and that they stay in place. At this point, they should mostly stay in place because all the other wires are soldered down. I think that's probably gonna be fine. If not, we can do the, the pressure trick that I did for the previous one. Not a big deal. So was that. Okay, yeah, those stayed, so I can just hit them both. Boom, boom. My hand is so shaky. Nope, stop moving. Doesn't matter which one you do. First, that one's good. moving moving on me my own arm is moving it resting my arm on the, the base of the helping hands and it's moving I can't do that come on float I got the solder on the other side there we go Boop. did it I could have put a little bit more there, but that's fine. Nice and shiny. Uh, no, it's not. I need to do some more. Luckily, it's not a big deal. Flow it, hit it, boop. That's better. So not the most perfect soldering job in the world, but everything's a TP, everything is shiny, it'll do. So now we're good. We've got all the ground going to this this uh, this ground pin. We've got the digital button uh, pin for the button going to this pin, digital pin zero, and then the, the unified, the power going to three volts. And uh, these two blue signal, wires for each potentiometer going to analog eight and nine. So that's good. Let's uh, get my trimmers out. And uh, what I'm gonna do is just kinda, you don't want all of that. Oop. Just trying to knock the, knock the, the height off of them a little bit. All right, that's good. Nice and clean. So now, um, I think we're done. Good time. That took longer than I thought, but anyways, I'm glad we did it. Did it right, looks good to me. Um, the next step will be uh, flashing some software, flashing some firmware, so we'll get to see that. And then uh, once that's done, we can actually secure the stick. Uh, I've got these, these, these holes here that I added for pushing hot glue in through the bottom. So that's what those are for. Uh, we don't want to secure the stick with glue until we're sure that the software will flash, the firmware will flash, and that everything is working right. We don't want to have to go in and do a, a, a wire soldering repair if it's been glued down. So save the glue for later. Make sure it's all going to work right, test it a bunch, and then we glue it. But next up is software, uh, firmware flashing for the TNC, and then we'll glue the stick down, and then we'll get onto the actual device. In this case, we're going to start with the Tartarus V2. That's what I've got right now uh, for the current uh, mod that I've got. Um, and then when I get an Orb Weaver, uh, which might be next, we will do a separate disassembly, reassembly for that device. But for now, we're going to just mess with this. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope this helps you. Later.